All right, so this is going to be a quick video showing how to open up and disassemble this HP, um, this is HP Compact 8200 Elite Ultra Slim Desktop. All right, so pretty simple. We're gonna remove this screw here. Okay, so just undo this until it goes all wobbly like that. Once you've done that, you can kind of use that to pull it, but usually what I do is I use my hand and kind of slide it. Can be a little tricky. Um, it might help to kind of use your fingers here on the back to help pull this while you kind of push with your thumbs. Whatever works for you, or you can kind of just keep working on it like this, and eventually you can see, oops, you can see there's a gap here. But um, once you get under, you can kind of grab this gap here and pull it off. Okay, whatever works for you. Here you can see they have all these little instructions here for how to remove stuff, how to remove the CD drive, and other components like that. Okay. So, all right, anyways, I'm not gonna use that. Uh, first thing we're gonna have to do after opening this is remove this front piece if you wanna get um, the CD drive out. So there's these little green arrows. You just pull the parts up slightly and then pull it forward. So just like this, okay, and there we go. Then you can lift the computer up slightly and you can kind of wiggle that and pull it off. You can see there's these little hooks here that kind of grab into it. We'll set that aside. Next, we're going to remove the CD drive, optical drive, whatever. Um, this is a very standard type of drive that is used in laptops and things like that. So if you wanted to change this to like a Blu-ray or different DVD drive, you can. We're going to first disconnect this cable. Um, if you can, try and grab the black part of the connector. Okay. Then you kind of just wiggle it as you pull. And there we go. All right, to remove the CD drive, there's this green latch here. You have to push it in quite far so it passes this metal piece here. Then you can go ahead and slide it forward just like that. And there you go. We got the drive out. It's very easy to check. So if you want to replace it with the exact same model, you can go ahead and take a look at that and you can check what model yours has. All right, we're going to set that aside. Next, we're going to remove this um, tray here. This actually has the hard drive in it. So let's go ahead and pop that out. So you squeeze this piece here, okay, and pinch it together with this. Then you can go ahead and lift this up. Um, let me see, actually, oh yeah, you do have to pinch that, okay. Then lift that up. You can see it slides out. So the, uh, the hard drive, um, 2.5 inch SATA hard drive is connected down here. Once you lift this up, you can actually lift this whole tray out just like this, okay. And here you can see um, how it's mounted. So it looks like there's three screws here. I think there's actually supposed to be four, but one is missing. So I don't know where that is. I don't see any missing loose screw in here. Okay, so I don't know, maybe someone changed that hard drive before or it didn't come with one. Um, there's a slot down here that says uh, X1 PCI Express 1, okay. Um, I don't know what you can put in there. If anyone knows, feel free to let us know. Then there's also this slot here. I believe that's for a video card, but I'm not sure either. It's a pretty big slot. Okay. Um, I don't know what this jumper's for. I don't see a label. Um, this thing says BBR PSWD, so password something. I don't know. There's a CMOS button here, so I guess this button is for CMOS reset. I don't want to reset that. There's the CMOS battery here. So this kind of battery is a little bit tricky to remove, but basically you push this uh, piece over and then you can pull it up. All right, I don't want to remove it, but oh yeah, that does come out just like that. Okay, so that's how you remove the battery. You got the SATA connector and the power right there, of course. You got one fan connector here that comes out pretty easily. You just pull it straight up. And you got two sticks of RAM here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're gonna pull these two tabs aside pops up I can wiggle this out and this is two gigs pc3 10600 s so you can put any pc3 10600 s if you want you can get two eight gig sticks and upgrade it to 16 gigs of ram um, again pc3 10600 s okay so you want to check yours but uh, it should be about the same <clears throat> okay um, i'm not sure how this fan shroud comes out I don't really want to mess around with it. Oh, it just slides up. Okay. So this fan comes out pretty easily. Um, it just lifts up like that. It's not too dusty in here. The fan blades do have some dust on them, but it's nothing too bad. Looks actually pretty decent. Okay. Then we're just going to slide this back down. Okay. 
good lined in lined up into place all right so pretty easy there's not much else in here to go over um, there's other jumpers here FDO and then BB I don't know what those stand for so I wouldn't mess around with the jumpers because I don't want to mess anything up all right so let's go ahead and find out what screwdriver we need to take the hard drive out and put an SSD in here all right let me go get the SSD <clears throat> Okay, so we cloned everything over to this SSD, um, it's 480 gigs, there are different models, if you need help finding one, feel free to let me know, and I will point you in that direction. Alright, let's find out what type of screw we need for this, this is a pretty big, um, wow, it almost fits a T20, maybe it's T15, Torx 15 screwdriver. Yep, okay, so we're going to use a T15 or Torx 15 screwdriver. I'm going to move this out of the way so I don't drop the screw in there, so screws in there on accident. Okay, and let's go ahead and take these three screws. Again, there should be four, but there's only three in here. Okay, so we got that one. All right, these screws are somewhat tight. Okay, again, I don't know where one of the screws went. Okay, and make sure to take note of which way the hard drive is going so you can put it back the same way. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so the hard drive's like this. We can go ahead and it looks like we can slide it out this way. Does it come out? It's kind of getting caught on something. Um, there we go. Okay, so we just slide it out this way. I'm going to get the replacement drive and slide that in. Okay, and we do have to kind of slide it down here so that we can... Get the screws back in so i don't know why they have such a big empty s slot here um it doesn't look like you can put two hard drives in it so i don't know why they designed it like that but that's how they designed it okay let's go ahead and get this screw back in okay if you want you can loosely fit it first until you get all the screws back in okay I don't know if the rubber broke off or what, or if that's just the design because they are different on both sides. Okay, so we're going to tighten that screw down. Okay, and then the last screw here that we got. <clears throat> Sorry if I'm going out of view. It's a little bit difficult to see what I'm doing while I'm doing this. Okay, so... That screw also feels somewhat, I don't know, it keeps spinning, so I don't know if it's broken or what's going on. There we go. Alright, let's go ahead and tighten this one more. Alright, I think that's good enough. Let's go ahead now and get this back into place. So, there's actually these little notches here. So, we're going to just line that up, drop it into place. Then we're going to close this back down. When you put this, you can kind of push it to slide it back into place so it connects into that slot there. And then click it into place. And there we go. Very nice and easy to do. Then we'll take the CD drive or optical drive, put that back in. It's a little dusty. Let me actually clean it off a little. Okay. And then make sure this green part goes behind this metal. And then just push it till it clicks into place. There we go. Make sure to plug this back in, of course. All right. <clears throat> and then we got this front plate as well. Let's go ahead and put that back. Bug flying around in here. Okay, so you got to get the bottom side down in first. You do have to kind of lift it up a little. All right, get that in and then swing it over and click everything back into place. Good, very nice and easy. And then we just get the cover here. Start with this um, screw side further back, of course. Okay. And then just slide it over, get the screw lined up, and tighten it into place. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others. So that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Uh, every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Let me see if I can get this open again for a good thumbnail. Okay helps to kind of use my fingernails in there but there we go there you can see inside maybe I should do it like horizontal because it's 
better. It looks nicer that way more horizontal area. I don't know. All right. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. All right. Get this back on. Everything lined up. All right. All right. Let's drop this. Bye.